So once you've gone through this process, once you've, def- again, you've told your story, what your agency does, why it's great, how you're changing lives, how you've helped other agents as well. Uh, again, this is one of those things we'll start to do where as you have success stories, you want to share those, you want to get agents in that are successful, have them kind of give their testimonial to the group. You you get to the point where you close them. But again, we're not closing in the traditional sense like you got to do this or else. You want them you want to close them to give them the opportunity to do this, but let them take the reins. Again, I don't think that in all my years of recruiting, I don't chase an agent. I don't chase them because I want them to arrive at their own conclusion that what I am doing in my agency is the appropriate fit for them. I want to give them all the resources, all the excitement, the energy, the proof, uh, anything and everything that they need to make that first step for themselves. I'm very reserved on pushing an agent over the edge. Um, sometimes that's good, but many times you don't want people to do something that they weren't necessarily the ones making that decision. I don't know if I'm, I'm describing this well enough, but I don't chase agents who are on the fence. They want it like I just got done talking to a guy today. He's with another organization. Um, he knows he can get paid better. He knows he's got access to leads, but he feels an obligation, understandably so, to finish up what he's doing with his current organization. I'm not going to follow up with him. The ball is in his court. He knows everything he needs to know. He's got all the information. And if he's going to take that next step, it's up to him to do it. So again, with new agents, this is how you have to treat them. The ones that want this, and you have to trust this process, they will pursue you because they'll be super excited by what you've set up to this point. And if they f- see themselves being able to do this, they and you, and you want them to in a sense, they will take initiative, right? These are things we're trying to figure out doing this whole process. They'll take initiative in order to take the next step. So let me describe how to do that. You want to create urgency at the end of the close. You do want to take questions. I think that's fine too. Uh, if you want to, uh, you know, refine some things, questions they have, be completely transparent. Transparency works. Don't hide anything from them. Tell them the ugly truth. Try to explain why that's the case. Again, your best prospects, that won't deter them. That will, They'll appreciate that. Again, the best ones will be drawn closer by transparency. The worst ones, if, if it, it's a turnoff, then great. At least they found out now and you haven't wasted all this time trying to change a mind that's in cha- under non, non-changeable. But um, what I would say is that, and again, if you're following my recommendation of being an elite agency where you only hire the best, you need to tell them this. We're only hiring one person right now. We're only, or we're only looking for a core group of agents to develop because our vision is to be the best agency. Not the biggest, but the best. So we're only looking for the right people. We're looking for the, everybody that meets the criteria that we described. We don't want anybody with any of the criteria that we don't want. Okay, And it's really important to understand that you know, we're very selective. And we only want some of you. So here's what I would say. Here's what you do next if you're interested. Now, this is a little kind of, you don't, you don't have to follow what I'm about to recommend, but I like it because it allows you to see who's going to pursue you. Um, could you lose agents by it? Sure. But it's a totally different process. And it keeps your status as the authority, as somebody that, will take orders from you and execute the way you want to. Uh, <clears throat> I would recommend saying, here's the next steps. You've seen everything that I have to offer and what we can do. You can see how we have this vision of helping people around here with their insurance needs and taking select agents and growing them into successful people that get quality of life, a great income, and, and really a wonderful career. Here's the thing. We don't want everybody. I've made it clear up to this point. We're only looking for the best of the best. I want you guys to think over everything that you've heard today. Give it an evening to discuss it with your wife, what you think about it. And then if you're interested, 
you have to reach out to me tomorrow and let me know where you stand. And then we'll let you know if we think you're a good fit. Might be that you're not. Don't take offense. Um, we don't want to waste your time as much as you want to waste ours, likewise. And then uh, that'll be it. And uh, you guys, thank you so much for coming. So you can do a, kind of like a takeaway close where you're not necessarily closing them right on the spot. You can do the softer one too, where it's like, hey, if this is something you're interested in with us, you know, uh, we're going to start talking to people now, kind of feeling out a couple other extra questions, blah, 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 blah. And then from there, you go into what we're going to talk about next week, which is the ride-along interviews as far as the next step. So you can do it a lot less, uh, I guess, takeaway-based, and you can do a softer close. Of, it doesn't matter to me what you do. It's important, though, to make sure you have a way to filter and make sure who you're talking to is a good fit. So maybe you uh, uh, say, hey, if this is interesting to you, you like what you've seen, go ahead. And we're, we're, what we do after this is an actual ride-along interview. You don't have to have your license. You're just coming along with me as I go in the field and sell. I still sell. And you get to see what this business is actually like in the real world. And you can decide based off of experience if this is good fit for you. And the nice thing about that is a ride-along interview, you are analyzing them as much as they're analyzing the business. And it's for a prolonged period of time, and it'll give you more insight if this person's a good fit or not. So that's a great way to close out uh, this kind of thing too. So that's it for the uh, opportunity meeting, how to structure them and why they're good. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about the ride-along training session. Uh, again, kind of refining more about what we're looking for, how to conduct them appropriately, and then also how to create training. So it's really important that you know you have a dedication towards training the best, again, uh, it's not something you don't, you don't have to have this mentality, but I really think it's the best way to do it long term is to create a culture of winning. And that means you don't hire everybody, that you hire the best. Because when you have that mentality of the best, you attract the best. And you want to make sure that the training is spot on, that you're dedicated to support and nurturing and growth, and that you start this process. The pro thing is you don't want to do and expect to have all this in the beginning, because you're going to spend an inordinate amount of time, like what I've done with all my training, that if you don't have any agents and you put this thing all together, you're spending a lot of time, precious time, that you should be prospecting for agents, riding along trainings, that kind of thing. And the good news is you can create all this training on the fly as you recruit, and we'll talk more about that uh, on next week's training. So I think that's it there. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this training. Uh, Antoine, or Anton, how you doing, man? <clears throat> Let's see uh, what we have here. Anton says, it's good that you talk about your failures because us entry-level guys are only getting spoon-fed the success stories, but not the truth. It can be challenging in the beginning. You know, it's funny. I'll just make this quick comment. My failures have been really a great source of inspiration. Um, every time in my life I've messed up or failed, it's been good for me. So if you guys have done the same thing, um, trust me, it's actually... It's actually good that you failed because you learn, again, why, do, why you do things right. And you can connect with a lot of people a lot better. And, and I think it is appropriate, like you said, to, to share that with people, um, not just the good, but also the ugly. Um, we're in a world where people pretend that um, everything is perfect all the time. You know, uh, if, if people on Facebook actually showed uh, the, the real side of life, I don't know if many people would use it. Maybe they would. Uh, if we showed the arguments with our spouses or or our life frustrations or or things that we doubt, you know, we actually I think there's a, a there's a vacuum or there's a real need for realism and authenticity. I think it's the only reason I'm successful, you know, in 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 this uh, insurance gig is that I don't like pretend that I'm perfect. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, I think that's something we all can do. It just it's weird. It's uncomfortable, but I think it works and it's effective and it's really the best way to do it. So, and when you do that in your presentations, it really works and, and you're going to connect to real people in a real way and develop a really good reputation because of doing it. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining and uh, we shall see you next week. I hope you got something out of this. You guys take care. Are you an insurance agent who is interested in building your own agency? If that's the case, then beware. There are so many opportunities, quote opportunities, 
out there for agents to level up their game and build their agency that put all sorts of contingencies and stopgap measures to prevent you from actually owning your agency and maximizing your commission. I put together a new program for those agents who are interested in creating their own agency. It doesn't matter what product you sell, but to give you the knowledge and the pathway to own the entire process of growing your agency and scaling it and making sure that no one, not a single company, person, or upline owns you, where you own the thing outright and you build your agency and your vision only. This program is something you can learn more about very easily if you go to daviddufour.com, click at the top that says Join Dave's Agency. You'll see a part there where it says Agency Builder Program, or something like that. Check that out, review it, and then uh, feel free to get back with me if it's something that's interesting to you and useful, especially if you're looking to grow an agency and understand the importance of building an independent way that has no entangling alliances uh, with anyone except uh, the vision that you have. So thanks for watching and hope to hear from you soon. See you. Bye.